I'm going to show you how to get started using a Picadev magnetometer and a micro bit. We'll connect these two together and get some fun examples working. Now the micro bit already has a magnetometer on board. But this article will be useful if you want to separate where you measure your magnetic fields from your micro bit. Like if this needs to move around, let's get started. To follow along, you'll of course need a Picadev magnetometer and adapter for micro bit a Microbit V2, and a Picadev cable. I'm using a 500 millimeter Picadev cable to keep my magnetometer nice and far away from as many electronics as possible. You might also want to have a magnetic compass nearby if you want to compare readings, and some permanent magnets can be handy as well. Start by plugging your Microbit into the adapter so that the buttons are facing up. Connect your Picadev cable, and connect the other end to your magnetometer and connect to your computer with a USB cable. In the article for this tutorial, find the download section, and there are three files that we need to download. Right click each link and save link as. I'll save these to a picadev directory in my documents. This last file, compass.py, I'll right click that and save that as main.py. We'll use Thonny to program our microbit in this tutorial. If you haven't used Thonny before, check out our guide for that. Or if you prefer to use a web-based programmer, check out our guide for programming the microbit using python.microbit.org. Open Thonny, connect to your microbit, and navigate to where you save those three files. We'll upload all of them to the microbit. Click the first, hold down shift, and click the last, then right click, upload to microbit. And we'll open up main.py on the microbit. This is a compass example. The magnetometer will sample magnetic field strength in three directions and do a little bit of math to collapse that into a heading similar to what you get out of a compass. The heading will be in degrees on the compass scale, so zero to 360 degrees for our heading on the Earth's surface. Before we run it, taking a quick look at the code, we have a couple of imports just to import the functionality for the magnetometer and a sleep function. Then we initialize our magnetometer and call it compass. So every time we refer to compass, we're talking about the magnetometer. We also set the range to 800. And scrolling along, we can see that we could have ranges between 200 and 3000 microtesla. That's the unit for magnetic field strength. After that initialization, we calibrate the magnetometer. And then in the infinite loop, we just read the heading and print that to the shell. If I run the script, we get a notice that will begin calibrating. So I'll rotate the compass very slowly, very slowly and smoothly in a complete circle. There's a progress bar that fills up and maybe resets every time a event occurs for calibration. Okay, calibration is complete. If I move the magnetometer around, we can see in the shell that heading change. And in the graph, we can see that heading change as I point the magnetometer in different directions. How cool is that? Let's see if I can find north. Okay. So according to this magnetometer, north is about that way. I've taped a piece of paper to my bench so it can't move and I've brought out my magnetic compass to check that reading. I'll lay the compass on the paper and look for north. So according to my compass, magnetic north is this way. I'll scribe a line. So now I've captured the direction of north in the studio as read by this magnetic compass. If I bring the magnetometer back in, let's see how close we are. How good is that? The magnetometer agrees exactly with the compass. I'm lining up my magnetometer to point in the same direction and I'm getting north, but about you know zero degrees or around there. If I face south, I get 180 degrees. If I faced west, pointing this way, I should get about 270 degrees. Ah, oh, you love to see it. Now, if you were to stop the script and refresh this file pane using the refresh tool, you might see a new file has appeared. This is the calibration data that we captured during compass.calibrate. By saving this data to a file, we only need to run this calibration function once. From now on, we could rerun this script 
with compass.calibrate commented out, and that way we don't have to go through that calibration procedure because when we initialize the sensor, it actually checks to see if this file is present with all that calibration data. If it is, it gets loaded straight in. Even though you don't need to calibrate your magnetometer every time, you may still have to if, it, if it's been near some strong magnets or has otherwise become magnetized. Speaking of strong magnets, let's move on to the next example. Find example two, detect a magnet, and copy all of that code into funny. I'll just paste that straight into main. This script starts in a very similar way to the last one. We just start with the maximum range, 3000 microteslas, because we're gonna be working with a magnet. There's a threshold programmed, and in the infinite loop, we just call the read magnitude function to read the magnetic field strength. Then we check that if strength is greater than the threshold, we'll print a message, strong magnet. When I run the script, we can see the magnetic field strength at about 80 microteslas. And as I move my magnet closer, that number ought to get higher and higher. And once we cross that threshold, we get the message strong magnet. If you're gonna work with magnets and the sensor, do your best not to actually touch them to the board. We don't want to magnetize components on the board itself, but it's fine to bring a magnet nearby. And you can see that we can detect that really easily. As a remix, if I comment out this message and we change the delay to 100 milliseconds, we'll be able to see a much more quickly reacting plot. I'll rerun the script. And now you can see, we can, we can detect very small movements of this magnet by using this function. So you can detect like proximity using this function. I'm only moving it about a centimeter or two. If you want to do your own signal processing of the raw data that comes out of this sensor, then example three is for you. Copy all of example three and paste that into main. This example calls the read function, and that just reads the three axis measurements in micro Tesla. So when we run the script now, we actually have three plots here, one for each of the axes that are labeled on the sensor. And so if I rotate this magnet 90 degrees on the table, we can see that really affects X and Y, which are the blue and red traces. But the Z trace is practically unaffected, and that's because the Z axis here is coming through the board and the magnetic lines on this magnet are moving in this axis only. There's no magnetic flux going out in this direction. If I were to stand the magnet up on its end, that should really affect the Z axis because now we have magnetic flux lines coming out of the poles of the magnet and going through the Z axis. All these numbers being printed for the axes are in micro Tesla, but if you want the register level values coming out of the sensor, then you can use the read function with just the raw equals true argument. Now the values being printed are the actual register values from the sensor along with any calibration that we collected. So there you have a few fun starter projects for the Picadev magnetometer and a microbit. If you make something cool from these starter projects or if you just have some questions, let us know in the comments for this article. We're full-time makers and happy to help. Until next time, catch you later.